While working through a pandemic, many of us have transitioned to working from home for a very extended period of time. Previously, if you had a quick question for a coworker, you just walked right over to a desk, asked and moved on with your day. That luxury doesn't exist for a lot of us right now. Before, many teams already used Slack, but didn't heavily rely on it. Now, being in different locations at all times of the day, a lot of teams heavily rely on Slack. CDNet wanted to round up some quick tips, hacks, and tricks for everybody to get the most out of Slack to maximize communication within the team while remaining productive. Since working from home, I found it's a lot easier for me to get caught up working and forget that I have a meeting or realize that I'm 15 minutes late for one. I've started using Slackbot to remind me the day before really big meetings so that I can go ahead and gather important notes and then 15 minutes before meetings so that I don't forget to join. I actually love it so much that I've started even using Slackbot to remind me about personal appointments a week out so I can remember to request time off or just let my teammates know that I'm going to be unavailable that afternoon. Whatever you need, Slackbot is a helpful reminder tool. Simply click on the Slackbot channel and type, for example, remind me at 2.50 that I have a meeting with my design team at 3 tomorrow. Slackbot will pop up a notification telling you, I will remind you that I have a meeting with my design team tomorrow at 3 at 2.50 p.m. It's going to also give you the option to delete the reminder and an option to view other reminders. Sometimes I just really need an hour of uninterrupted space to get through a project. And let's be real, incoming notifications are incredibly distracting. Slack gives you the option to pause notifications so that you can get through those projects and through those meetings when you need that time. You can set yourself away for however long you need. During this period, Slack won't send you notifications and will let your teammates know that you have Do Not Disturb turned on if they want to send you a message. But don't worry. If it's something really important, your teammates have the option to send a message with a notification anyways. That way you won't miss out on anything important. To turn this feature on, go up to the top right corner where your icon is, click on Pause Notifications, and select or set the amount of time you need. My organization has tons of group messages that enhance my day and put me in touch with a group of people immediately whenever I need them through those direct channels. But often I only use those channels once or twice a week for my job, so I don't need all of those notifications constantly. Slack allows you to still be on the channel while muting the incoming messages. Click the channel you want to mute, select the eye in the upper right corner, and then select mute for that specific channel. We've all experienced it. That one coworker who has 15 stories to tell about their weekend, so they send you a ton of messages right in the middle of the meeting or during crunch time to keep the distracting notifications away without missing important messages anywhere else in your app. You can mute specific channels or DMs without the individual knowing. Select the channel or DM you want to mute and type the command forward slash mute. You can unmute by typing the same command again. You ever get a message that you really frequently need to visit? Slack makes this easy by allowing users to pin messages. To pin a Slack message, hover over the message you want pinned, click on the three vertical dots, and select pin to this conversation. You'll see a push pin icon under the name of the person you're direct messaging. Click this icon to access everything you've pinned between that person and yourself. Do you use Slack or have any other tips, tricks, or hacks that other people should know about? Be sure to leave me a comment and let me know so we can try them out too. And as always, for all things tech, be sure to stick with ZDNet. Thanks for watching.